hello guys and welcome back hope you all are doing great so in this video we are going to create an advanced object pooling system i have already created a video on object pooling system which was very basic and simple but in this video we are going to create something more readable and more easily extendable so without any further delay let's get started As you can see here, uh, I have created a simple Unity project where I have these three, four buttons, uh, three spawner and a plane. So if I click on play, you will see that if I click on this blue button, it shoots the blue balls, white balls, yellow balls. If I click on all, they all shoots. Okay, so this is a very simple project, and here we have two scripts. So the destroyer just destroys the balls here and the spawner uh, spawns the object so if i show you in destroyer we have nothing but an on trigger enter as soon as our game object enters the collider of a destroyer it gets destroyed and in our spawner we have reference to our prefabs as well as the spawners so this is the method which is called by the blue button uh, this is for the white button this is for the yellow button and this is for all button and this is the script which uh, spawns the game object so we just create a game object name it sphere and we instantiate the respective sphere so here we are setting the index when we are calling this button method we set its transform and we add a force to its rigid body so right now uh, if you see in this inspector let's play the game and see it if i click on blue button we can see our objects are spawning but then they get destroyed here and uh, creating an object and destroying is not a very optimized way or i can say it's not a very good practice in game development so what we can do is we can use an object pooling so any game object which we know are going to be used in our game repeatedly what we can do is we can pull them that is we can just create some instance of it at the start of our game and we can just activate them when we require and then deactivate them so in this way we reduce instantiating and destroying the game object which reduces the garbage collection and improves the performance of our game so right click and create a new c sharp script and let's call it object pooling double click on it to open it in the editor okay so so here we are going to use an a dictionary uh, to store all our game objects our string will be our key which will basically the name of a game object and our value will be the list of a game object which will hold all the deactivated game objects of that specific type so let's create a private dictionary we'll give the string as a key and our value will be list of game object and let's name this dictionary as pool objects which will be equal to new dictionary so in awake we will reinitialize the dictionary so void awake and we'll just copy this and paste it here okay uh, we don't need start and update so we can remove that thing and now we need a method which will get an object from the pool so we are going to create a public method which will return us a game object uh, we will call it get object from pool uh, and in that we are going to pass a parameter of game object which will be a object prefab and we'll just start so it is basically similar to our instantiation method which we have in our unity so in that instantiate we pass in the prefab of the game object which we want to instantiate so it is we are going to do something similar we are going to pass our object prefab 
so here we will create a new variable of game object called obj which will be a null at the start and we are going to return that object so return obj okay so before we can return a game object we need to see whether this game object is in our dictionary or not so for that we will create a string variable call it key which will be equal to our object prefab dot name now we are going to check whether we have this key in our pool or not so we'll just see if uh, pool object dot contains um, key then only go further so here we first check if we have key or not now if we have the key now we need to see whether our list of the game object has any game object in that so we will again check if pool object key dot count is greater than zero then we just return the first game object of that list so we'll just return or we'll just set object is equal to pool object key zeroth index object and after setting that we will just remove that from our list so we'll just call pool object key and dot remove at and we remove at zero index now the reason we are doing this is because we want only deactivated game object in our list we don't want any activated game object in our list so that we don't need to find any deactivated objects in the list now let's say uh, if we don't have any game object in our list then we need to create one right so here we will have an else statement and here we are going to create it so for creating we need to create a new method so again we will create a method which will be returning a game object to us so we'll call private game object create object and in this we are going to pass our prefab so game object obj prefab and we will create a new variable game object obj which will equal to instantiate uh, object prefab so this is the unity's method of instantiating and then we are just going to deactivate the object so we will just object dot set active to false the reason we are deactivating the object is because we are going to give this activation power to the script which is going to uh, create this game object so before deactivating we will also rename it so object dot name is equal to object prefab dot name and this is very important guys to set the name here and we are going to return this object so return obj done now we can use this method here so else if we don't have any game object in our list we just create a new object so obj is equal to create object and we pass in the object prefab done now th this is the case when we have the key in our dictionary that means we have the object in our dictionary now let's say if we want to instantiate something which is not in the dictionary so how to do that so it is very easy we will create an else condition here so we need to add the key and the list of this new game object so we will just create so we'll just call pool object dot add and we are going to add a key so our key is the name of the game object so obj prefab dot name is the key and the list will be empty so we'll just create a new list so right now the list is empty because we are basically going to return this game object uh, and we don't want this game object to be in our list 
and here we will create a game object so obj is equal to create object pass in the object prefab so we have the conditions both when we have the object in the dictionary and when we don't have the object now this is a method for getting the object from the pool we also need a method which will return the object to the pool so for that we will create a new method so this will be a normal method which doesn't return anything we will create a public void return to pool and again it will have a parameter of a game object so we will call it game object or object only and in this we are going to return it to the pool so we will create a new variable called string which will be the key which will be equal to obj dot name now we need to deactivate that object so obj dot set active to false because we no more need this game object in our scene and we can deactivate it now we need to check whether we have a key of this type in our dictionary or not same as in our get object from pool method so here we will check if pool object dot contains dot contains and our key is the key so if it has the key let me just write this thing okay so if we have the key then we need to just return it so we'll just add this game object to the pool so pool object where we have the key dot add which is obj that we are returning it to the list now let's say if we don't have the key so what we can do here so we here we need to create a list so this will be a list of game object and let's call it a new list which will be equal to new list basically and now we are going to add the object to this list so new list dot add and we are going to add the object okay and we are going to add this entire thing to our dictionary so pool object dot add we have a key and we have a value which is a new list okay so we have the required methods here we have get pool uh, get object from pool which gets the object from the pool we have return to pool and we also have create the object so let's say uh, and we have the dictionary which help us in creating this object pooling so let's use this thing so in our spawner we have this game object spawn uh, or instantiate method so before that we will just make this an instance so that we can access it from any script so we'll just call public static object pooling and we'll name it instance if instance is equal to null then instance is equal to this so let's go back to our uh, spawner script and instead of game object dot instantiate we are going to use object pooling dot instance dot get object from pool and in our destroy instead of destroying this game object we are just going to use object pooling dot instance dot return to pool okay let's try it and see how it works okay so let's create a new empty game object call it object pooling and just drag the script on it I click on play and let's try it now so 
so right now all of them are deactive let's i forgot to activate them so here we are going to activate so sphere dot set active is equal to true and the need and the reason we need to activate it is basically here in our pooling while creating the object we have set it to deactive so let's try it again uh, as you can see if i click on this blue button we create an blue sphere and it is deactivated here if we click on it again so as you can see the speed is increasing with every uh, spawning and it just we just missed the, our collider so the reason this is happening is because when we are spawning or reactivating it, uh, it the velocity it had or the force it had before it was deactivated it is still there so to get around this we can just set our rigid body dot velocity is equal to vector 3 dot 0 and this should solve our issue here so let's click on play and let's try it again if i click on blue you can see here all of our blue objects are spawning and activating deactivating so basically we are reusing our game objects so let's try with this all so guys this is the advanced object pooling tutorial here i hope you enjoyed it and liked it and learned something new from it so thank you for watching guys and i will see you in the next video thank you